I've been uh, doing this live bard thing now for 13 years. And uh, I keep doing it because I find that people like it is, the stories that I tell. And I try to understand why it is that, that, that I do this and that other people like it. And so I read a lot about poetry, more about poetry than I read poems, actually. And I must share with you a little story because I know you. Uh, over the holidays, I came in possession of a book written, uh, or a couple of books written by the same author in 1937. And he said, for all of the 2,500 years of, of Western literature that there have been commentaries on what poetry is, he said it all boils down to three types. There's poetry that entertains you, that makes you happy. There's poetry that teaches you a lesson. And there's romantic poetry. That's it. 2,500 years in the Western tradition. And he said, and he said the, the, of all the types, I mean, there's symbolism and imagism and confessionalism, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's all can be reduced to three types. And uh, the, the, uh, the, poet, uh, the romantic type is, has been uh, prevalent for 250 years. So I'm going to do some from all of these for you tonight and let you see what you think. Uh, our next poem uh, is going to be uh, of a little different category than Casey. Um, it's called The Old Timer. It was written in 1917, and what's happening in, in the world in 1917? World War I, and uh, it's the uh, first year that America has entered, or is about to enter that war. So that, I think, adds part of the tone to this. Um, and just a couple other things. If Casey was written in 1888, the Oklahoma land rush was in 1899, 50,000 people line up on the border and head to Oklahoma. And then in 1890, the Census Bureau comes out and says, after they've done their counting, the frontier has ended. Everybody is, there are more than two people per every square mile west of the Mississippi. And in a 25-year period, three and a half million families settled in the west. So poof, changed the story. And so this writer is uh, commenting on uh, one um, person who was uh, impacted by that. Again, the old timer. He showed up in the springtime when the geese began to honk. He signed up with the outfit and we fattened up his bronc. His chaps were old and tattered, but he never seemed to mind because for worrying and fretting he had never been designed. He's the type of cattle puncher that is vanished now, of course, with his $100 saddle on his $20 horse. He never seemed to bother over fortunes up and down, and he never quit his singing when the gang was full of frowns. He would lose his roundup money in an hour of swift play, but he never seemed discouraged when he ambled on his way. He would hit the trail a singing, and his smile was out full force, though he'd lost his fancy saddle, and he didn't have a horse. I have wondered where he wanders in these late degenerate years, when there are no boundless prairies, when there are no longhorn steers. But I'll warrant he is cheerful, though unfriendly is the trail, and his cigarette is glowing, though his grub supply may fail. For he had life's happy secret. He had traced it to the source of his $100 saddle on his $20 horse, the old timer. That, that, there's, there's a tone in that that just has a, a, a great appeal for me. And of course, the, the, the story isn't about a saddle. The story is about a lifestyle that has ended. 